Okay guys, so what's on a lot of people's minds is an uncertain winter. A whole slew of different kind of crises. With the fear of being cold, the most prominent issue, an emergency power outage, massive cold conditions, and what and how you're gonna handle that. The time to plan and prepare for that is now. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can have heat and light for a small area that could cost you no money out of pocket. That's right, teaching you a DIY how-to emergency heat and light for a small area coming right up. Welcome back everybody. If you're brand new here, you like tips, you like how to's, emergency preparedness type stuff, news that affects you, be sure to hit that notification bell so you guys can stay up to date. Let's jump into this one. Like I said, guys, for most people, this DIY emergency heat and light for small areas shouldn't cost you a dime. And for some other people that may not have all of the items at home, it's only gonna cost you a few bucks from a place like a dollar store, making this a great solution for just about anyone. Like I said, with all this uncertainty, all the crises that are going on, and all the predicted crises coming up this winter, you need to remember you have the ability to go to a store right now, buy the supplies you need, go online, research the things that you don't know, and be prepared now. So with that in mind, let's get you some valuable information so that you are more prepared for the winter power outages. In this video, we're gonna go over five steps. First, I'm gonna show you a few examples of a variety of different things that you can keep in your car or in your storage area. That way you're ready for the winter crisis. Number two, important safety information that you should know. Because we're talking about heat, keeping you warm. Number three, what type of items you can use to build these and where you can find them for practically nothing or free. Number four, I'm gonna call it pro tips. I'm gonna give you some extra information that I think that you should know, and I'm also gonna give you some information on how to build these. And if you make it to number five, I'm gonna give you a bonus, an emergency tool that I keep in my car that I think is super, super important, a fantastic emergency item tool that I think every car should have. Now, like I said, I keep this thing underneath my seat. Okay, so with number one, I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of different varieties of these different type of Crisco candles that you can make. This one right here happens to be the one that I keep under my seat in my truck at all times. As you can see, it's got a close hanger mechanism for hooking on your rear view mirror. That way it's suspended. You don't have to worry about burning anything down. There's also these type of pre-made styles that don't take as much construction. Dollar stores. You can find these things at the dollar stores. Then it can be as easy as throwing a little tea light candle in it. That right there could help you out in a car emergency. Here's another style that I found at another type of dollar store. You could also get big ones like this and throw up to three candles in it, filling it up with the Crisco. And this, my friend, will last weeks and weeks and weeks of constant burn. The simplest thing you could do is just make sure that you've got a candle in your car or some candles set aside. Here's another style right here. You can also use these little squatty wide mouth jars, often used for jelly. These are all different ways and applications that you could make this DIY for emergency power outages. It's gonna provide a lot of light, and the most important thing with using the Crisco is it's gonna last a long time. This one right here with the wire on it is one that I use down in my root cellar area. I've used it for a year. It was filled up to the rim. Look how much it's went down. I wouldn't be surprised if that thing has burned 50 hours only going down that far. I'm telling you, we're talking about weeks. The stuff burns for weeks. So like I showed you, lots of different styles you could make these things. And I'm telling you, when the SHTF happens, power outages happens, and it happens to be really cold outside, something like this providing light and a little bit of heat is gonna go a long way. Number two, safety information. It comes up a lot in the comments, so I wanted to address some things. One thing a lot of people worry about is the glass. They wonder if it's gonna break. Think about those prayer candles you see and all the candles you've seen in glass jars. The glass just doesn't heat up that hot. I've always been able to hold them. They get warm at most, and I don't know anybody that's personally bursted a glass jar with a candle in it. If that's something that bugs you, you can always use tuna cans, soup cans, all kinds of stuff like that. Another safety question that I get is fresh air. So with one of these things going with one wick, it's gonna put off a moderate amount of heat for a small area. You're not gonna heat up a full size room with one small little candle. Although I've had many reports that people say 
They've heated a room with a couple candles and it made a huge difference. We're talking about taking things from freezing temperatures up to like low 40s, high 30s, tolerable in some state even warmer. But the thing is, is you're making a difference when it's freezing cold out. But with that, you have an open flame burning. So you gotta keep oxygen in mind. Most people that have experience with this would say don't worry about it in your car, whatever. With safety in mind, I would crack a window a tiny bit or give myself some fresh air every once in a while. Another question that I get with safety, is it getting tipped over? Yes, it's an open flame. You could start a fire. So with that, you need to put it in a safe place. That's why I put the wire on the jar. You can easily hook it around your rear view mirror, it keeps it suspended out of the way of everything. That works really good in a car. When it comes to a room, I usually get a baking sheet or I put it on a piece of tile. Keep in mind, it's an open flame. Some people get worried about their cats or animals knocking it over. Chances are the flame will go out if it gets tipped over, but you always need to be prepared for the worst. So be safe on where you place it. Number three, what type of materials can you use? Well, as you can see, you can use jars, ball jars, canning jars. I use all kinds of different jars. Jars really work great. And as I mentioned before, cans, tuna cans, soup cans. I've made them in number 10 cans, the big ones like the coffee cans. Something like this is gonna last a very long time. We've also got lids that you can put on the top, put canning lids on the top. These things are great just to keep them fresh. And if you happen to leave them in your car and it gets crazy, crazy hot in there, you don't have to worry about them melting. But this year I had mine in my car and it turned into an oven multiple times in over 100 degree weather and it never even melted underneath my seat. But with that, having lids is just a safer option. You can buy these little wire hooks. You can use baling wire. Any type of wire works really, really well. I would recommend using wire because you don't have to worry about it being above the flame. And a super inexpensive trick is the old coat hanger. And Crisco is what we're using in these things. It is vegetable shortening. With that, if you're in the UK or Europe or some other country, a lot of times this stuff's called Trex flora white or cooking the other thing a lot of people use is fat lard a lot of different things work on making homemade candles so like i said a lot of homes are going to have these items already in them if nothing else you might be missing something that you could pick up at a grocery store for cheap i know you can buy these things with the handles on them in a lot of different stores including a lot of dollar stores i'm pretty sure i bought this one right here at a dollar tree if you want to go the candle route you can pick these little tea lights up for super cheap you got these types of lids that you can just screw on. You've also got your canning lids that you can use. Number four, pro tips, and just stuff that I know about these things that I think you should know. If you use them a ton and you got quite a few going, some people have mentioned that they do put off soot. You can get soot on your walls. I haven't personally noticed that and I've used them quite a bit, but it makes sense if they're being used heavily. With that, you're using them in an emergency situation. You're trying to stay alive, you're trying to stay warm, you have emergency heat. I don't think soot is gonna be a big deal when you're using these as an emergency survival tool. Another great thing to make sure that you have and working is a CO2 detector. It'll let you know if the oxygen is compromised. Safety first, always. So have your bases covered on safety. Just make sure you're safe. I can't stress enough how amazing these things are and how well they work. Right up here, I've got a video that teaches you how to make the car style one, the one with the coat hanger. You can hang it on your rear view mirror. And right down here, I have another video showing you exactly how to make these things step by step using a terracotta pot, using it as a radiant heater. Those, both of these videos are very detailed on taking you through the how-to steps of making these things step by step. I hope you guys watch these videos and you make these. Put one in your car make a few for the house. You will be better equipped for emergency winter power outage, and it'll give you a peace of mind knowing that you guys got those things made and ready. Okay, if you made it to number five, you're wondering what this thing is right here. This is the tool that I think every car should have. It is super cool. This right here is a Halo XT made by Four Patriots. It's a multi-use flashlight. As you can see, it's also solar powered. Right there, you can see it's a dual USB charger, which means you could charge something with your flashlight. Other functional features are a compass. Right, right here, it's got a little safety harness over the power button. That way it doesn't accidentally get clicked on. Super bright flashlight with strobe mode and everything. It's got an extremely powerful magnet on the side. 
That way you can stick it up on the side of your car, illuminate your work spot. Maybe you're trying to change a tire. Maybe you've got battery issues. This point right here, it's like a hammer. It's a window breaker. In case you get trapped in your car, you've got a hammer with a window breaker because maybe your electric windows aren't working because your car's broke down. Right here, you got a steel blade which could be used to cut your seat belt off because maybe you can't get your seat belt off. Now, I've seen a lot of gimmicky type stuff. This guy right here is built tough. It's all metal. You can tell it's tough. So I'll leave that special link for our community down in the description below. They've got some amazing sales going on right now. So there you guys go. Some DIY how to emergency heat and light for a small space. I hope that emergency heat hack helps you guys out. Keep prepping, keep learning, keep doing. We'll see you guys on the next one.